my name is Mark Sullington. I'm a director at SCS Sustainable Enterprise Strategies. Um, and I look after the more strategy end, the uh, the front end of the organisation, and help the organisation to grow and to be sustainable. We've been trading for the last 30 years and we're still here. The core aim of um, SCS is to use enterprise and all its forms to challenge poverty and inequality within the North East, particularly Sunderland and Newcastle upon Tyne. Tyneside. Um, we do this by delivering uh, social enterprise, cooperative development, uh, mutual development, uh, both in startups, trying to kickstart social enterprises and also to grow social enterprises. And we have been doing that for the last 30 years. In the present time, we've got about 245 directly supported social enterprise on our books. Which at the present time, by our social accounts, those employ just over 2,000 people and have about a combined turnover of about 35 million. Um, what, what, why are we quite interested in that? Yeah, it's because of social enterprises, but predominantly uh, those 2,000 employees are often from hard pressed communities of the North East, we inside Newcastle upon Tyne. Um, and that's what it's like, that's the central uh, aim, uh, vision for SCS. We also run traditional enterprise programs because essentially those skills of starting social enterprises are almost exactly the same to try and start enterprises and source traders, partnerships from working class estates, the big large peripheral housing estates which you find in the North East and every year we probably set up about 150 businesses like that, local people, uh, setting up as fabricators, hairdressers, bakers, that sort of thing. So not really that sexy type businesses, but it's probably the first business that person's created from a working class estate and actually generating twenty, thirty thousand pound a year income um, and getting off benefit. Of those 140 businesses, uh, 85% are from long-term unemployment. Uh, we also have so some workshop provisions. We've got a, a nice big social enterprise centre made out of recycled containers and we've got a, an old um, Siemens mission based on the Tyne side uh, where we house another five or six uh, social enterprises and on top of that we do like normal consultancy work, uh, feasibility work uh, to try and grow and kickstart more social enterprises within the North East. It's still at early stages. I think we got officially recognised, I think it was about, about September, October last, 19, uh, last year. Um, what it's allowed to do is, is to maybe raise the profile of social enterprises within the city, Sunderland, um, and also work with partners because we're simply getting some buy-in from the uh, University of Sunderland, for example, and those sit on like the steering group. The city council sits on the steering group. Uh, we even got IBM sitting on the steering group because they do some quite a lot of work at the North East IBM. And IBM now is trying to mentor SES in certain business skills, understanding business. So I think that city status has allowed new partnerships, new interaction with people which we've probably previously not worked with. Uh, the example of that would be uh, IBM. Also, um, social enterprises and social enterprise city status has brought on some of the large housing associations within the North East, uh, for example, Gentoo, who have about 30,000 houses in Sunderland, are also a member of the steering group. So essentially it's got a, a, a partnership development and trying to consolidate its position. And we're trying to create an action plan for the next three years on how we want to double the size or triple the size of the social enterprise sector within the city. Obviously we'll raise the, the consciousness, the, the awareness of, of emotion of social enterprises because uh, I think it's, it's still not recognised as a, a viable tool or a viable business, I'll be quite honest with you. Quite a lot of people marginalise social enterprises um, to say it's like for not for profit and that sort of thing. And we'll try to reinforce the image that social enterprise is a trading business that needs to make profits. There's a question about how you disperse those profits. So that message has been, been hammered home over the last six months and a lot more people start understanding that concept, especially within the partnership. I know people have seen interesting uh, opportunities that may occur from that intersection. 
And a good good example of that is like IBM, Gen2, which is a large housing association, uh, and a, another uh, cooperative uh, employee ownership cooperative, cooperative in Sunderland called Sunderland Home Care Associates, mm-hmm. ourselves are working together to try and investigate more interesting, efficient, and more effective like e- electronic care systems to, to get delivered within housing associations. Um, Housing stop profile and also like um, delivering domiciliary care within the city. So we're using new technology to explore better ways to deliver care. I think we're working towards a like a three-year action plan. Um, so everybody's signed up to what we define what is social advice. We're doing a benchmarking exercise at the present time to try and get the scale and nature of social advice. As we know how many SES has started and created. We've got that figure, but there's also probably a double amount of that outside in the city, so we're trying to map them, so at least we've got a benchmark. And we're thinking about the benchmark in Sunderland, there's about 200 trading social enterprises, and we've probably got a very strict definition of what a social enterprise is. Um, and it is about trading and making profit. Um, and we're going to agree, if that's an acceptable level, if that's our benchmark, and then we're going to agree a three-year plan to triple that size within three years, um, so it's 200 social enterprises at the present time. We want to create 600 in, in three years' time, and we devise a, a little list of actions to try. And we're going to try and implement a social accounting audit process to measure that success, to measure that distance travelled by local people and their fellows with those social enterprises to try and measure that impact of those social enterprises within the city. It's, a, it's almost like a watershed. It's, it seems like, uh, quite optimistic what the feeling is. And it's quite interesting to talk to like, private companies, global companies like IBM, because um, uh, and large housing associations like Gentil, the universities, and that sort of thing. People are almost like, coming together to say that things need to be changed. Um, What's happened, you know, economic realignment and rebalancing of economic powers has almost shifted people's thinking about we might have to do things more differently. There is opportunities and we can work as a partnership to deliver agreed so outcomes around both sports or tra- actual trade and actually employ local people uh, on reasonable wages and we could find sustainable enterprise and actions t- to resolve some of the major problems within inner cities. It just takes a bit of a time and obviously um, and some effort, so we have to try and allocate time and resources to try and push it through because essentially you might have these interesting partnerships, but essentially they always look at you to try and enforce that change or push through things, do reports, that sort of thing. So it's a bit, it's a bit time consuming at times, but that's life, we'll change things.